circulatory systems and really what, what need do we have for them? So why do we have circulatory systems? Well, you know, we look at single celled organisms, there is no circulatory system. So why not? Why don't they need one? Well, the smaller the organism is, the higher its surface area to volume ratio. Okay, which means if we take the volume and the surface area with that volume, there is a lot of surface per unit of volume. So we can actually get more stuff. Metabolites diffusing in. Example of metabolites we need, or this cell would need, is O2. O2 in. And nutrients, you know, sugars, etc., etc. So the higher the surface area to volume ratio, the or sm very small organisms have very high surface area to volume ratio, so they have no need for a circulatory system. All right, this diffusion distance from the outside to the middle is very short. A short diffusion distance meaning they don't need to spend out any energy creating a circulatory system to help that happen. Okay. Why do we then, as human beings, uh, or mammals or larger organisms, need that circulatory system? Well, because we are made up of trillions of cells, uh, our surface area to volume ratio is very, very low. Yeah? This, the outside of the body here, if we were just to try and absorb or absorb oxygen or excrete waste through that surface, we would not be able to do it quick enough in order to supply all of the trillions of cells in our body with um, oxygen, CO2, nutrients. Uh, oh, sorry, we're getting oxygen and nutrients in, excreting CO2, urea uh, out and transporting hormones and antibodies around the body is a secondary kind of function of this circulatory system. But uh, we need to get oxygen to every cell, right? From the lungs to the other parts of the body, we need to excrete CO2 before it becomes toxic. We cannot do that by diffusion alone across our surface so we have to have structures inside our body that increase the surface area to volume ratio for taking in oxygen that's our lungs and getting rid of co2 that's our lungs and our digestive system to take in nutrients yeah the high surface area of our small intestine uh, all of these adaptations help us take in all these things and circulatory system is taking all this stuff around our body to all the different cells so we've got a number of different types of um, circulatory system. Uh, we don't study the open system like in insects in GCSE, but it's worth knowing that actually um, in an insect, the there is no complicated heart or pump. It's just a pumping, contracting tube, mixing the blood or, we don't even call it blood actually, we call it hemocyl. and um, which is an oxygenated fluid that's actually inside the exoskeleton of that insect or arthropod. All right. Um, then we have, uh, so we have an open system. Then we have a closed system. Closed system are all contained within blood vessels where insects actually aren't. Some of it's kind of open within the body of the, uh, within the cavity inside the organism. Closed systems, we have a single and double is the single in a fish uh, so we have simply the heart we have one circulatory system going heart gills body heart gills body okay so gills body heart all on one sort of loop of the system if you like and then we have double system like ours uh, also like um, amphibians like uh, birds reptiles all have these are mammals as well as so we have two systems. We have one that's concerned with 
pulmonary system, yeah, where the lungs are involved. So it goes heart, lungs, back to heart. Let's have the heart, lungs, back to heart. And then we have another loop whereby we have heart to body and back to heart. So two systems, the pulmonary system, labeled P, um, and the systemic circulation, which is the second first and second system. All right. What are the advantages of both single and double circulatory systems? Okay, so um, let's do advantages of the double first. So uh, it's more efficient. And the single circulation, um, it pumps blood twice. So actually, the the high higher pressure is kept. High blood pressure kept in uh, in the blood vessels. I mean, the blood blood is transported quicker. Um, so we can get, if we have quick flow, more O2 transported, basically. So double circulation is more efficient because it's quicker, higher pressure, more oxygen supplied, uh, more CO2 excreted at the same time. 